Sony just replaced the FSR upscaling slider in their excellent PC port of God of War with FSR 2.0. This new improved upscaler is temporal rather than spatial, meaning for image quality more on par with the highly regarded NVIDIA DLSS without any of the special proprietary hardware that the Team Green solution demands. This doesn't necessarily mean that FSR2 is simply free performance. The minimum system requirements are much less strict than for NVIDIA's solution, but AMD still recommends at least an RX 590 or GTX 1070 for 1080p output. I don't have an RX 590, so... In my previous videos, I've established that AMD's minimum requirements for FSR2 are maybe a little pessimistic. The Vega 7i GPU on my test PC's Ryzen 5 5600G saw some pretty decent performance scaling at both 1080 low and original settings. I'd also argue that the GTX 1070 that I'm testing today doesn't strictly need FSR to run this game at 1080. I tested the card a couple of weeks ago and could manage a 60fps average in general gameplay at high settings with ultra textures. This time then, I'm going to make the 1070 work a little harder. I'll be testing from the start of this surprisingly demanding indoor scene through to the first part of the initial boss fight with Balder. Starting the test at 1080 with high settings and ultra textures, and FPS is about as I'd expect. The average is maybe 3 frames slower than my last test, which makes sense considering the number of GPU intensive cutscenes in this run. Enabling highest quality FSR drops the render resolution to 1280x720 and gives a 20% increase in performance for really next to no trade off in quality. After quality comes balanced, with a render resolution of 1130x636. Averages climb to 73 FPS, about 29% above base resolution, and 1% lows are creeping closer to the magic 60. FSR performance is only rendering at 960x540, and it's starting to show in the image quality, but frame rates are now up 39% from 1080, averaging just below 80 FPS. Finally, ultra performance isn't easy on the eyes, and I can't say I recommend it, but averages are now close to 90. My preconceptions about FSR with the 1070 seem to have been mostly borne out. FSR quality or balanced is really all that's needed to ensure an even frame rate as the game gets more GPU intensive, but even without FSR, the 1070 is proving pretty capable in God of War. That wouldn't make for the most exciting conclusion to the video, however, so I thought I'd see how much tougher I could make the tests. With quality cranked up to ultra, the native 1080 run was way down from high. Averages are now down as low as 45 FPS, and 1% lows not far above 30. How much of a quality difference is visible at Ultra is debatable, and I'll give you some comparison footage later on, but under ordinary circumstances I wouldn't much recommend this combination for the 1070. With FSR2 however, we can claw a few of those lost frames back. FSRQ brings the average over 50 FPS, though sadly it still can't bring the 1% score back above 40. Even balance doesn't do the job here, FPS are now 55 on average, and still drop into the mid-30s on occasion. FSR performance is perhaps the closest 1080 Ultra comes to the performance of 1080 High, averaging a hair below 60 FPS, and with 1% lows still scraping under 40. To get a 1% low above that requires the Ultra performance setting, and at that point one has to wonder why you picked the Ultra quality preset in the first place. I mean this doesn't look particularly ultra to my eyes. It's all well and good testing at 1080, but how does 1440 hold up? Well, performance wise, a native 1440 run with the original preset is roughly on par with the 1080 Ultra results. However, the impact of FSR is much more dramatic. FSR quality takes the render resolution to 1708 by 960, resulting in a 36% increase in FPS. The average frame rate climbed from 46 to 62, with lows scraping just under 50. Balanced FSR, or 1506 by 848, is still a shade under 60 FPS minimum and over 67 FPS on average for a 48% uplift over native 1440. Performance FSR is the first scaling option to allow a locked 60 FPS experience, with a 75 FPS average and a total of 66% improvement over the base resolution. Finally, Ultra Performance FSR gives a 100% increase over 1440, averaging over 90 FPS and with 1% lows of 75. 
Render resolution is just 854 by 480 so things are looking pretty rough, but I dare say it's legible enough to be playable. I should also point out that I neglected to choose ultra textures this time, hence the VRAM usage is pretty low, though doing so shouldn't have too much of an effect on performance, and especially at lower scaling options shouldn't benefit image quality much either. I was curious how the 1070 would perform at 1440 high. After all, not everyone needs a 60fps experience to enjoy a cinematic game like God of War. The native 1440 high run was 10% slower than at original quality, with a 41.5fps average and a minimum just above 30. Pretty good for anyone looking to lock at 30, but of course we can do a little better. FSRQ is a 30% improvement on native, giving just about 54fps on average. FSR balanced is still fractionally under 60 FPS on average, and FSR performance is only about 5 FPS over, though minimums are still down in the low 50s. Ultra performance can give a locked 60 FPS experience, but I'd argue that this isn't the best solution to strike a balance of quality and performance. Finally, well, I've come this far, what's another hour of benchmarking between friends? After some finagling, I thought I'd managed to get my capture card working at 4K and ran my test scene five more times. Alas, the capture card ended up recording a slideshow, so although the data is sound, I'm afraid the footage was basically useless. What you're watching now is just more of the 1440 original capture. Still, I'm guessing you're here for the numbers anyway, and I certainly have plenty of those. At native 2160, we're not having a very good time. Average FPS is just 25, and 1% lows are 17. Scaling is pretty much mandatory now. At FSR quality, the render resolution is actually 2560 by 1440. The test came back at 36 FPS average and 28 1% lows, which is pretty interesting. That's about 20% lower than native 1440 original, so that means FSR 2 does have a pretty hefty overhead. FSR balanced is scaled up from 2260 by 1272, meaning for about 41 FPS on average and 33 FPS lows. FSR performance is rendering at 1920 by 1080. I didn't test this card at 1080 original, but the frame rate with FSR is about 17% lower than the 1080 high results, averaging 47 FPS. Finally, and you'll have to take my word for it, but this is the best looking ultra performance result so far. The GTX 1070 manages to deliver a 60 FPS average at 4K original, upscaled from 1280 by 720 at least. This video isn't so much about declaring a winner among FSR settings, I'm simply showing these side by side comparisons to help you make a judgement call about just how much loss of quality you're willing to accept in pursuit of frames.
the GTX 1070 handles God of War like a champ at 1080 high, with or without scaling. If you have a 1080 monitor, a judicious use of FSR might help maintain a locked 60 FPS at high settings, but isn't quite enough to do the same at Ultra. 1440 gamers can expect a better percentage improvement over native resolution compared to 1080, and I'd argue that any use of FSR could potentially make 1440 Original a playable option for the GTX 1070. Moving up to 1440 High, or 4K Original, this card isn't realistically going to give a good 60fps experience. If you can tolerate frame rates in the low 40s, however, you might just find this is enough. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.